everyone, welcome to researchmd.com. We've got a great presentation today. We're going to teach you all about HHV6 and HHV in the children. It's known as Roseola Infantum. Again, my name is Premier Charyat. I'm a program director in internal medicine residency, transitional residency. I teach medical students and medical residents. I'm also director of research. So let's get into our subject. So human herpes virus, HHV6 and HHV7, they belong to this family of herpes viridae. We had presentation about HHV1, 2, 3 before. So today we're going to focus on HHV6 infection. In the children is known as roseola infantum. In the adults infection, typically like there is a reactivation. So this primary infection, they later on, just like any other herpes virus, can reactivate after hiding in the, uh, hiding in the cells, okay? So again, HHV6 and HHV are like members of family herpes viridae, subfamily is beta herpes Virinia and genus Roseola virus. They're closely related to the CMV virus. Okay, so um, reported zero positive, about like 95% for each virus. And infants and young children um, is usually called Roseola. And um, so, what is the pathophysiogen uh, pathogenesis? It's not very clearly. So, what do we know? Like so far, virus type infect human cells and establish latency. And HHV six A uses like CD forty six as a primary cell receptor, while HHV six B uses like CD one thirty four. And then lifelong latency. So, it can hide in the body for a very long time and reactivate at any time in your later life. Okay. When you talk about HHV, they use so CD4 as a primary cell receptor. Uh, so lifelong latency by CD4 tails. Remember, if you remember something, HHV just kind of HHV 6A and 6B uses CD46 and CD134, and HHV kind of uses like a CD4 as a primary cell receptor. Okay. So then reactivation, when does it happen? Usually reactivation can happen later on in the life. Then there is like an immunocompromised state, right? Most infection adults go through be due to the reactivation. In children, um, not due to, but in the adult, it's mostly likely the reactivation because large majority of the population has primary infection before age five. In solid organ or um, stem, stem cell transplant, reactivation can occur after first weeks of transplant. So. Uh, anytime when you get a transplant after from the first few weeks, you can have a reactivation because of the immunocompromised status. So what is the, what is the be way they can transmit? Just like the other herpes uh, viridae family, close contact through blood, saliva, and respiratory pathways, organ donor, very, very important, and blood transfusion, okay? So chromosomally integrated HHV6 may be trans transmitted to offspring through germline cells or recipients of the organ cell or cell donation. So maybe that's the reason in the uh, transplant patient. So let's look at the symptoms. Primary infection typically before age five um, and about 80% infection are in, uh, asymptomatic, okay? In asymp in, if symptomatic, typical course is like period of high fever followed by rash um, those are the fever and rash you will see. So let's talk about the children like Roseola in fandom. Fever greater than 103 degrees is very common. And then rash suddenly appears after the resolution of the fever up to three days after. So classically, you have this Roseola in fandom or exanthem, sibetum, or six disease. That's what it's called. Faint, light pink color, no associated peeling or itching. There's going to be, it's going to be discrete, irregular, circular, or elliptical macules or papules, two to three uh, millimeter in diameter, mostly found on the trunk and the neck, remember that. But it can spread to the extremities and the face and typically lasts like one to two days. Sometimes you can have like uh, fever-induced seizures in this. Other findings may be like diarrhea, cough, you could have like cervical lymphadenopathy also. Um, in the adult, if you look at it again, if the symptoms may be non-specific, could be fever, rashes, and uh, transient decrease in the blood cells of granulose, macrophage, erythroid, and megakaryotic lineages. Okay, encephalitis, classically usually limbic, and occur in small number of patients due to. HHV-6B, remember that, okay? HHV rarely associated with the clinical diseases. So how do you diagnose this? Mainly your clinical examination history is taking. Uh, suspect HHV-6, so commonly HHV infection patient with the immunocompromised patient. You have to be uh, very careful on the fever, rash, bone marrow suppression due to tissue invasive manifestation or can have like hepatitis, encephalitis, pneumonia, and colitis also. 
So diagnosis roseola, roseola again, it's in the infant and young children, clinically by, you have the distinctive rash and uh, upon resolution with a high fever. So distinctive uh, rash, a resolution with a high fever, that's what the clinical characteristic. Laboratory testing is not needed. Um, so when do you do lab tests? When there is like an organ transplant, solid organ transplant, so you can do the blood test, you can do PCR, look at the sensitivity, it's pretty high, like 84% specificity is like 98%, okay? So how do you treat roseola? Roseola is usually resolved by itself. Uh, most of the time it's like asymptomatic and you can do supportive care, like we usually do like hydration and antipyretics. So what do we like, when do we treat the patient have like immunosuppressive therapy? and then uh, if they have organ transplant, then you have to do antiviral treatment, okay? So HHV-6, you can use gancyclovir, foscarnet, and uh, clodofir, and HHV-7, you can use foscarnet or uh, actually sidofovir, okay? And it's um, a treatment duration guided by serial monitoring, you can do the viral load, and uh, usually recommended until the virus is completely cleared from the blood of the infection. So what kind of complications you can have? Again, we can talk about complication mainly have to be in the immunodeficient status, okay? So it can cause like associate other with an infection could have like CMV. You can have like, I mean, there's recurrent hepatitis C and other opportunity infections like fungal infections also very common. You can have drug-induced hypersensitivity syndrome, graft versus host disease and thrombotic microangiopathy. These are the complications you have to worry about it, okay? So it's a brief presentation, HHV6, HHV7, think about roseola, remains asymptomatic, think about the, what happens in the um, immunocompromised patient, especially transplant fever, usually they get reactivated within one week, uh, one to two weeks, okay? Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back with another presentation soon. Thank you.